Hey guys, now in this tutorial we'll be looking at uh, dynamic class, dynamic schedule class. Okay, now when we looked at static class, what what we noticed very clearly is that each of the th chunk is allocated to the thread number, thread number uh, based on the thread order. Okay, uh, be, I mean based on the number of the thread. Okay, so they go kind of serially as the as we see over here. The each chunk gets allocated to thread uh, more or less. Uh, not more or less actually serially in this way okay now so what happens is that in the actual the, in the actual execution even though when the thread order might be messed up messed up the threads will still confined to the chunk thread mapping chunk thread mapping which takes place earlier okay now what dynamic class does is that it does not it does not here in dynamic class this th piece to thread mapping does does not exist in the sense what it does is that it takes the overall overall iterations divides them into the small pieces of chunks okay these are defi defined by the chunk size and then waits for the thread to call the chunks now whichever thread becomes active okay the thread uh, request a random request a chunk from the uh, request one chunk one chunk to come and based on that, based on uh, and then the chunks get allocated to the threads accordingly. So what happens here is that uh, the threads actually uh, there's no pre there's no predefined chunk here. So what the, what it does is that the the threads kind of blindfoldly comes and picks one random chunk and does the job and then go away. And if they if they get another chance, they come and pick another th other chunk and does the job and go away like that. So it's completely random. It's completely random. Okay, so what happens is so here the mapping between the chunk and the thread does not uh, is it's not predetermined like the static class and that's why it's called as dynamic class. So when you run the program, when you when you run the program when this iteration pile comes in, depending on the availability of the threads, the chunks get allocated to them. Okay, so as a consequence, here what happens well here what happens is that. Here, what happens is that the threads the threads have uh, are given priority. So, when uh, whichever thread is free, it does the job. Whichever thread is not free, it, it just remains as it is, or it uh, because it's been doing some other job, and like that, and so on and so forth. Okay. So here, unlike the unlike the case over here, where where the unlike the case over here where the mapping is fixed, there is no mapping over here. Look at that. Let's look. Let's take an example. Now let's look at schedule class, dynamic schedule class without any value, without any chunk size. So if there isn't any chunk size, the default chunk size will be taken as one. So if I run this, so if you look at it, since there are there isn't any chunk size uh, assigned, there is any chunk size assigned. The default chunk size for dynamic class is one. So each iteration is actually a chunk, and uh, the allocations are completely made random. So what happened here is that iteration zero is done by thread three, okay? Iteration one is done by thread zero. Iteration two is done by thread two. Iteration three is done by thread one, and whereas all the other iterations are done by thread zero, okay? It might look uh, it might look as if uh, thread zero takes all the jobs and just gives the only the some jobs for everything else. Okay, it might look as if each thread gets one uh, chunk, each kid there is one chunk, whereas the rest of the chunks get allocated to thread one, thread zero. Not exactly. So if I were to uh, close this and uh, run this again, watch. Similar example, run this again, similar example, run this again. Um, few more times. Come on, there was this one different example there sometime. Yeah, there you go. You see this? Now this is a different example wherein chunk two gets I mean the thread number two gets majority of the jobs. Okay? And if you if I were to continuously run this, okay, in some other execution, what might happen is that two or three threads might become active. Hmm, I don't know. When I ran this some time ago was this example okay anyway you saw me you saw what I mean what I'm saying right what I'm saying trying to say is whichever thread was free or active it takes them it takes the chunks and does the operation 
So here, as a consequence, one the load sharing is completely. Uh, sometimes it can be even. Sometimes it's uneven. You never know. In these kind of cases, the load sharing is strictly uneven because one thread, the uh, one thread, kind of gets a majority of the loads dumped on it. Okay, whereas other threads are they they're just idle, because idle in this case. So if I were to run this again, again, no, maybe for demonstration purposes, I'm just uh, reducing the chances. But oh, thank God, thank God, I got it. I got an, a different example. So in this in this uh, in this execution, see what happens. This is interesting. See here, iteration zero is done by thread zero. Iteration zero, four, five, six, and six, and seven are done by thread zero, whereas iteration uh, and even iteration eight is done by thread zero. Okay, uh, iteration three, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen are done by thread two. Okay, iteration one is done by thread one. Iteration two is done by thread three. So here it's like a, it's like it's like a tug of war. Whichever thread is active and dominant and uh, dominant, it gets more threads. It gets more chunks to be done. Okay, whichever thread thread is not active enough or it's uh, it does not it it is not able to finish the job quickly or something like that. That they take the back seat. As a consequence, the load sharing in these kind of cases are strict are re really bad. Are very bad. Most of the time, you might get a condition like this where one thread does majority of the job, where other threads just hardly do any job and they remain idle. Okay. Sometimes you get a you might get an example like the previous time, wherein uh, two threads might have might uh, have a duopoly and other threads kind of like remain idle. There might be cases where many threads can do like possibly because the number of uh, uh, the number of iterations are pretty small. That's why you're getting a situation like this. Whereas if you have the number of iterations are pretty large, then the uh, partitions there there will be even more number of uh, chunks that will be available for the threads to fight among and get. So that that case it might be pretty even and random. Though it's not random, it will be pretty even. Now this is the case where the dynamic this is the case where the chunk size is small. The, the chunk size is not determined, so it, by default it's one. Let's set a chunk size to be two and see what happens. If I set the chunk size to be two, then some kind of order comes into picture. Now, clearly, uh, iteration zero one one are one chunk. Iteration two and three are another chunk. Okay. Iteration four and five is another chunk. Okay. So what happens here is that now each thread has its own, each thread has more chunks instead of one iteration as one chunk. Each thread has each chunk has two iterations. Then again. Then again, the then again the power uh, the struggle for uh, then then again the allocations are pretty random. The allocations are uh, allocations are pretty random, and you might face conditions wherein one thread might dominate, uh, one thread might take a large number of uh, chunks, then when compared to other, or two or three threads might take the majority and they might fight, something like that. It goes on, it goes on, like it goes on. Here I'm just using a small example for illustrations, but in in case if you're using a very large number of iterations or something like very large number of iterations, then the distribution would be more or less uniform. More or less uniform. So what I'm trying to say here is that when you're using a dynamic class, when you're using a dynamic class, just like the same case as above, okay, in the previous example, so T1, T2, T3, T4. The allocations are pretty random. Seriously, the allocations are pretty random. It uh, it need not follow the same round robin order which we looked at. Okay. It j they just go on and go on and on, like that. Okay. Now, that's the thing. Now, let's look at the case where the number is much larger. Possibly larger than the ideal iteration, ideal uh, chunk size. That's this case. So if if that being the case, let's say chunk size is five, and watch. Clearly, with the chunk size is five, okay, the chunk the, there are each chunk has five iterations, so no question about it, no question about it. So that is taken as a maximum chunk size, and whichever chunk, whichever thread is strong enough or, or picky enough or uh, uh, hurry, whichever chunk, whichever thread is free, 
or dominant sorry whichever thread is dominant that which has power which the it, it comes and picks the picks the chunk and does the job like that simple as that okay this is this is one good thing about uh, dynamic uh, class wherein there's no mapping the chunk to thread mapping is uh, not is not there and it runs on the it, it goes on the fly it goes on the fly okay so the chunk size is remain smaller chunk size remains small and it goes all goes along like this now in the next tutorial we will be looking at a guided uh, chunks gu guided uh, uh, schedule class and then also tell about runtime schedule classes okay thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time